start hanging in front of him. Had to get something in my stomach, man. I'm starting to get a headache. <laughs> a little coffee. Hey, can you hear me? Haven't done a stream in a while, so I'm trying to figure stuff out again on <laughs> how to do it. So uh, I'm going to have uh, two cameras um, just going back and forth. Um, there's the Bruce setup. Oh, cool. Okay, so um, right now I'm at 153. I need to get to 170. Or uh, I go in, I have, I'm going to be doing 10 gallons. So here's part of the first. Here's the rest of it. I'm going to go ahead and get the match time together, guys. So if any of you guys want to uh, join the panel, just let me know, and then I'll uh, message you through uh, YouTube. 
Guys, let me know if uh, the audio gets better or worse when I make this change. Okay, testing one, two, three, is that better? Is there too much echo? I'll you guys are right here too. Try not to make you sick. Yeah, I'm so we got it. Okay, I'm back on this guy right here. But yeah, I wanted to have uh, two cameras set up so when I go to dough in and stuff, you guys can see what's going on. Now I do have a Google Hangout going if you're uh, interested in joining. I won't be posting the link publicly because I don't want any trolls. Cool. Thanks, Nuts. And then in the description below in the YouTube, uh, there's a link to the uh, the brew that I'm doing today. So awesome. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, doing 10 gallons at a time now. Um, I don't brew as often, so it takes a while to get through 10 gallons, even when I'm handing it out to uh, coworkers and neighbors and stuff. So, yeah. So we're at 164. We got about six more degrees before we go in. And when you see me look up like this, I have a monitor up here where I can see when I'm uh, over there, see if you guys are uh, chatting or not. But welcome to my humble abode. Alamode. What's up, little Billy? What's up? All right, we're getting up to temperature now, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the other camera. I'm going to get Dode in here. All right.
as you can see, I'm using the Herm system. Um, if you're having an issue getting out to uh, that recipe, just go to Bruger.com, which is B R. Let's see, let me just type it out in the chat real quick. After you do a search for Shadow Rays, that's my uh, alias. Um, go ahead and do a search. We got the water coming up.
I'll keep this around um, 152, 153 on my match. Right now, we're at 152, which is awesome. Sorry about the glare. Saw that. Uh, go ahead and switch back. I want to make you sick. Sorry, guys. Okay. Maybe I should turn here. Sorry about the glare. Throttling down the amount of liquid being circulated. Okay, my Hermes coil is now out of the water. So it'll be noisy for a minute. Okay, so cool down to 141, it'll be back up to temperature in one fifty two. Oh, it checks up to 148 on its way up to 152 again. Yeah, I have to get the timer going here in a second. So close. Right. 
Making beer or making work. Duck Craig. <laughs> yeah, it's a two car garage. It's smaller than the other one I used to have. There's not much room on the side, so if look you know behind me here everything's right up against the wall or i have you know my saws and all my automotive crap all just up out of the way well herms is more manageable if you have a system that will manage the temp for you so if you got the bids um it i don't have an issue i'm spot on Every time it doesn't take long to mash out either, so get that baby up to 168 doesn't take long at all. Well, the reason why my garage isn't cluttered is that um, if we have the cars parking here. When you get the cars in here, it has to be it has to be picked up, otherwise the cars won't fit. My wife's got a Cadillac that's 17 feet long and it just barely fits. I mean, she's, she's probably got, you know, six inches to spare, you know, otherwise the garage door won't go down. So. And then get the fan over here. It's still a bit warm here. So Craig, I have um, any of you guys, if you're interested in coming in the Hangout, I can send you the link. So let me know if you want to join the the Hangout. Other people can see your ugly mugs. Trying to set up the other webcam. We don't have to go back and forth as much. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh, that sucks, man. Hopefully your dad's okay. So right now we've got uh, 55 minutes left on the hour mash. Make sure I got everything set here. Thank you. 
Ah, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my water salt crap in. What's cool is I know what this water is. I can get the pH right, everything else. Every time I have. And it does make a difference. Big cracker. Well, I wish him, I know we all wish him a uh, speedy recovery. Hopefully the procedures aren't bad. And... You gotta get the pH right. I have very high pH here, so it takes about a tablespoon of phosphoric acid. And I add enough for uh, hard water as well. So. All right. Get all my tubes out. I use both hydrometer and refractometer. And then here in a bit, we'll check uh, the H. Hundred away. So when I go get my sample, I go in the house, 
get some uh, cool water in here um, uh, with some ice, and then I take my sample, put it in this guy, let him sit in there, and he cools off pretty quick. And then when I get it down to temperature, then I can get a good uh, pH reading. I also have, and here is, um, it's the buffer solution for pH meter. I'm trying to catch up on the chat. All right, Craig. If you're not already dropped off, have a good one. Anyway, I use this to uh, calibrate my pH meter. Usually, I don't know why it, they're always off, but um, so I'll do that. I got to stir up the mash real quick. I added the salts and everything. Sorry about the crotch shots, guys. <laughs> All right, so pH. The little calibration screwdriver. The solution lasts quite a while. So right now it's registering six nine. This uh, is uh, supposed to be uh, seven point oh one, so uh, seven point zero. Those little buffer solutions, they're pretty cheap, but I like to save it. But I put it, just put it in a baggie. It works perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna go get the sample. I'm gonna go get my ice water real quick, so I'll be returning here in a moment.
I would play some music in the background, but he ain't travel. Thermometer. Chemistry. Microbiology. At 102, 101, it's coming down quick. Five. Eighties, eighties rock. What's everybody doing today? Just hanging out. Seventies, we're almost there. Get it down to about 65, we'll be good. 10 more degrees. Nine, that's a good number. Almost there. Wait. Right. Let's see how we are. I got five, 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 four. Gonna let her sit for a minute. That's why you can do it in the garage. Make a mess. Mother Nature will take care of you. Evaporation. All right, so our pH is at 5.4, which is close enough for me. We're only two points off of where I'm usually at. So next time I'll add maybe a couple more drops. And my star sand. Put him in. I have not made a, an October of Mars in for a while, man. No one's chatting, man. Got five viewers. If I can get you guys set up better on the other webcam.
Let us all do the webcam at the same time. So at the moment, we're 37 minutes left. Fix here, it will spring. Yeah, never seen this come apart before. I've had this uh, camera stand for quite a while. Get these cameras and stuff, they have this, they have this little nub on there right here. That keeps it from moving. Thing popped out. I have to probably super glue that thing now. I don't have any duct tape, so I can't go red green on you. There's something that I can around. Hopefully the glare isn't too bad on me. So you guys can uh, take a look at the other thing. So those of you who don't know my setup, I can run over with you if you're interested. There, out of there. Won't press down. Okay, so I built the controller. Um, this is the main power on up here showing the voltage, the current, uh, energy being used, and then of course the light when you turn it on. Um, here is the buzzer alarm, so my timer's in the middle, and when that ends, the alarm will audibly go off, and the light light. And then the flickering light over here that you're seeing is the inside the HLD right here uh, is the element, and this is telling me when the element's firing, it goes in conjunction with the out light on the pin, and these are easy to go pins. So this side is the HLT, and this side is the oil kettle, which is not hooked up yet, that's why it's blinking, because the last thing you want to do is turn on the element that's not submerged. In the and then this switch right here keeps only one element on at one time, so it's a selector switch. It's either or, because you can turn both of them on, you'll get a spike in amps, and pop your breaker. The green lights here are the light signifying that both pumps are running right now and they're controlled by these switches here. So this one on the HLT is doing the recirculation for the water going around the coil. And then uh, this, this pump right here is going for the recirculation for um, the, the work running for the actual pump coil itself. So uh, if you guys have any questions on that, let me know in the chat. And then so the HLT here's the line in 
from the first pump, where down here you've got the, the water actually coming out through this hose as the pump recirculating back up top. And um, if you were to look in here, um, it's actually spinning around in here. So it keeps the temperature. Uh, let me change the audio, the audio to the other microphone since I'm over there. All right. Tell me if that's better. Anyway, you got the recirculation going in, in here. And we'll go over here and visit Mr. Lauder ton, mash ton, whatever ton. And if you look at the way we have it hooked up, let me make sure it's okay. Sweet. Thank you, sir. So in here, um, this is the in and out for the Herms coil inside the HLT. And then this line goes into the mash tun and does the recirc and then comes back out the bottom here and goes to the pump here and it just continually goes through the Herms coil in the, in the HLT to keep its temperature. And just take a peek, let me move him out of the way. You can see what's going on in there. Nice gorgeous color. I got a ball float in there. And I do not do a, a fly sparge. I do batch sparge. I found that with uh, my setup, I get better efficiency through batch sparge. So I'll do two, maybe three at the most. And here at the end, he's not, like I said, I keep him unhooked until it's time to actually use them. But in here, I got a 5,500 watt element. Uh, here's the temperature probe. Uh, this is my Whirlpool port. And then here's the, the tube. It's a dip type tool, tube that goes to the bottom where I, I can uh, you know, get as much as I can out of, out of this guy when I'm uh, doing the uh, cooling of the word so um let me point you over here for a minute the garage okay i'll bring it to you Like with anything, I make stuff where you can actually attach it to the wall. If you look at the hole here, um, here's my hot spider. That'll go on the mud pedal. And then I got a screaming deal on this uh, Terminator. These are usually $200. And through Facebook Market, a guy was getting rid of it for 50 bucks. Couldn't turn it down. I've added a thermometer, theme thermometer, and then the fittings and a valve for when I do it. And I'll show you how that's hooked up over here. So if you notice my table, it's actually hooked to the wall, and it just I can pull it up. I put this brace underneath it, and it makes Things where I can put the pumps in. There you go. Put my cold water in, or cold water in on this side. Comes out top this way. That runs over to the other side of the garage where there, I got rocks and there's a, um, a drain over there. It's outside, which is cool. And then, uh, yeah, everything's set up here to go through the cooling.
And if you look, see, I got my monitor up there. Usually have uh, some thrash metal rocking in here while I'm brewing, but on this special occasion, I'm not. Hey, drumming buttons here. <laughs> I'll send you the link here in a minute. But yeah, this is uh, the garage is pretty spacious. I mean, it. There's so much room, you know. You can you can hang stuff up on up from the ceiling as well. Other other neighbors of mine have done that. But I put in those, they're LED shop lights. They were like 25 bucks at Home Depot, the Home Depot. What's up, brother? Um, let's see, it's, you do the messaging in a in a ballot on YouTube. Is that correct? I can't remember. It's been a while. Your setup is out of the dark ages. <laughs> oh, 10,000 steps. You know what's funny is that, that those pedometers, is, you know, they tell you to do 10,000 steps in the Fitbit and all that. Um, I had been working out so hard uh, the past couple of weeks that I've been going over 20,000. And every time I turn around the Fitbit's yelling at me, you've achieved your goal and you achieved your goal. So I, I think if you overdo it, Fitbit has a fit. Well, let me know when you get back because I have uh, 25 minutes left in the mash, so we got a ways to go. Um, I got to do mash out and then uh, start sparging. So we'll be boiling in probably an hour or so. So when you get back, let me know. But I'll send it to your Gmail account that you have listed. And I have to have a fan running in here because it's, uh, it gets hot. You just have an insulated mash tun, no research or anything. Hey, you know, um, I'll show you what I use when I'm not uh, brewing at home. This is pretty much what I started out with, and it's the old fail safe. Um, up here, I got my turkey fryer. And I can do five gallon batch. It's, you know, it's just a propane setup and I, I do Bruna bag on it. I used to do the mash tun bit with the cooler, um, but uh, it, I think when I moved, I actually gave it away to someone who was starting up their brewing. 
and I didn't need it anymore because I was getting good beer out of out of just doing a brew in a bag. See, next time I'll do a pitcher and pitcher. Yeah, I'll probably move my gold to I'll move my goal to probably uh, 15,000 starting this next week. I've been doing training this, this last week and it threw me off. Um, like you and I have been telling each other, uh, Dio, is uh, uh, you've lost like 20 plus pounds. I'm almost there. I'm at 16, but I, I leveled off because uh, the, the training I was going through, it was on London time, so I was up at 2 in the morning all week last week. So it threw me for a loop on my intermittent fasting and my workouts. But I was getting my walks and stuff in, but I want to start doing, you know, some more weightlifting and stuff. So, so I can lose the rest of it because right now I am at 2, oh, what is it, uh, 2, 212, 2, somewhere around there. And I need to get down to 180. So, but don't stop, man. Um, it's motivating watching other people do it that you know, and those that drink beer as well, you know, homebrew. So it's hard to keep it off if you're drinking homebrew. And damn, I, I went a whole week without, whole two weeks without drinking that that initial because I had a health scare, it scared the hell out of me, but. Um, Everything's good now. Now I just have to deal with this rheumatoid arthritis crap that came up in my blood work. So that's about it. I thought my liver was shot, but after I did inter intermittent fasting for uh, for a few weeks, my numbers went back to normal, and they've always been off. And I think it's because of the being lackadaisical and drinking all the homebrew, I'd go through uh, a corning keg of beer in two two weeks, if not less. So um, now I'm making my beer last. So this is a 10-gallon batch that's going to last me for... Yeah. <laughs> it's scary, man, um, when... Uh, I'm faithful when it comes to going to the doctor every year and getting checked out and getting, getting the physical done because I'm not getting any younger. I'll be 53 in a, in a few days. And um, every year that I went in for the past you know, six or seven, all my numbers started going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, my ferret levels, my body doesn't deal with iron very well. That's evened out, which is awesome because I couldn't give blood to, you know, the blood centers because I was stationed in Germany in the 80s. And that was back when mad cow disease was. And it flagged me and I can't, they won't take my blood. So for them to take my blood, it would cost $150. And I'd have to do it three or four times a year to take a pine out of me. And it's not worth it. So, you know, I'm not that 20-year-old uh, soldier anymore. You know, in, in my head I am. I'm in pretty good shape now. I just got to keep going. But, but don't be afraid to get on the scale. I, uh, while I was going through uh, those first three weeks, which I'll start again tomorrow, um, start intermittent fasting again and, and I, I keep my diet too um i'm doing more of the keto diet more high fat low carb you know protein for your weight um but weigh yourself every day and keep track of it and if you you go back and you look a month back track every day it's kind of cool to see see uh the progress that you're making and it's pretty motivating pretty motivating 
my wife, she only weighs herself once a week. I can't do that. I have to do it daily. At the same time, every day after you've had your movements, you know, your Beethoven Fifth Symphony movements, and, and you know, you've emptied yourself of liquids, and, you know, just weigh yourself, and you'd be surprised on how much you, you actually lose. I was talking. <laughs> but give me a minute. I will be right back. I should get a little spice. I need to get some uh, more coffee. This is my friends. I bet you can't guess what that is. Yeah, three guesses and the first two don't count. What's up, brother? Okay. <laughs> You're right. I had to change the bells on my damn car. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Stay tuned, okay?
I'm back. Demon dish. <laughs> Nothing like the real Oktoberfest in Germany, right, Scott? And for those of you who don't know, um, Scott Fisher, that's my brother. He's my elder brother. We were stationed over in Germany at the same time back in the 80s. And it was so boring in... Uh, Northern Germany, where he was at, that he had to come down and party with me in Bavaria. <laughs> went to a couple Oktoberfests. Him and I didn't go together, but I'm pretty sure he went. I, I went twice. So. And spot brow. Um, yeah, I was the big hop brow guy. I love hop brow. Gotta get some more of these things drying up. So we got nine minutes left. After I moved, <laughs> I hadn't had a chance to unpack stuff. So. Um, so a lot of my pens that were working are dried up. The temperature changes. Oh, you had one bad one. Oh, nice. Scott, say hi to Angela for me. Any little fur babies? You know, a little story on uh, the real uh, October Oktoberfest. Um, I was stationed north of Stuttgart in a little town called Ludwigsburg, Black Caserna. And they used to have get-togethers where the, um, the military, the army would, uh, would rent a bus. And then you would all take the bus to Munich to Oktoberfest. There's no way you want to drive with it over there by your, you know, in a car, because that's the one place in the world where you have the most people, one place at one time. Same. There's so many damn people there. But anyway, on the way there, they had chartered a, a bus, and um, the bus didn't have any bathrooms, and 
the the thing was stocked full of beer and wine and everything else, and people were drinking on the way. And from Stuttgart to Munich, that was a good four hours, I believe. I'd, I'd have to look it up. But um, they'd have to pull over, and we were <laughs> – the bus driver pull over, you know, he's, he's, he's German, you know, he's, uh, some guy that they rented with the charter bus and we'd go piss on the trees and everything else on the side of the Autobahn. It was funny as well, but, uh, it was kind of stupid. They didn't have, didn't have freaking bathrooms. Then when you got to the actual Oktoberfest, um, the only time that you can drink is if you're sitting in a tent, in one of the beer tents or, uh, one of the, restaurant tents you could um, you could have little food things out while you're doing you know like one big uh, carnival you know you, there's all kinds of games you can do there's but you can only drink when you're in a, in a tent and we had to wait like four hours until seats opened up in, in the hop route tent before we were able to drink um, but getting from point A to point B you just made human chains and hopefully your chain didn't break because you would lose people. There's so many people. It's like when you, uh, you know, piss off an anthill and all the ants come out. It's just like that. There's just thousands upon thousands of people drunk. <laughs> you see them carting people around on stretchers and stuff. It's funny as shit. They have them covered with a, uh, you know, yellow uh, vinyl thing, and you can see the people's faces. And they're just past out. <laughs> oh, God. The memories. I miss it. <laughs> I miss those days. So we got five minutes left here. Here we battle. Oh, singing all the beer drinking songs and hugging one another. Well, maybe you did. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Uh, all the polka, the German polka songs. Uh, roll out the barrel type stuff. <laughs> uh, but that was one cool thing about Germany, though, is um, the drinking age was 16, the driving age was 18 for the, the, the Germans themselves. And on the weekends, you know, where I was at, I know it's probably the same up north where Scott was at. They have these villages that are all around the, the main cities. Um, and it's beautiful farmlands. It's, it's wine it's, it's wine lands where I was at, Bavaria. And if you were bored on the weekend, hop on the motorcycle and drive off and look for a tent. Someone's having a festival somewhere. You go in there and just have a great time, become friends with the locals of, the, of whatever town you're in. They're celebrating something. I mean, it's best of times over there were phenomenal. And, oh yeah, nice to <laughs> nice to fuck us. <laughs> oh man, it's all passed out. I'm a big rocker. Uh, hung out at a place called the Rock Fabrique. At the time, it was the ninth best rock club in the world. And you had Anthrax playing there, you had Iron Maiden playing there. Well, no, Iron Maiden didn't play there. They were too, they were too big at the time. This is when heavy metal was just going. Metallica was huge. Uh, Mega, you know, Megadeth was starting to come up uh, because it was right after Cliff Burton died in 86. Um, but there's a shirt that I got at the club, and it's called It's Fucking Great. <laughs> my brother's passed out on my my bed in my barracks. <laughs> I gotta snap the photo of him, put the, put the damn shirt over him. <laughs> snap the photo of his ass. That was funny as hell, man. I remember that. That's back when uh, spandex was the shit. I wore spandex like, it, like there's no tomorrow. I had one of those uh, denim jackets with all the patches and the, and the bling on it. I have to post some pictures. <laughs> Oh, we're getting close. We're two minutes away, so I'm going to switch cameras, switch microphones, and 
actually, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to go ahead and do the mash out first. So I'm going to start cranking from right now. We're at 152, 153 up to uh, 168. So let me do that real quick. Okay. That simple. And just let it go. Actually, instead of 168, this thing, it starts to, when it starts getting to the temperature, it slows down. When it starts getting to 168, I can turn it down. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Yeah. Um, man, all of these stories, Scott, you know, we got four viewers. You're one of them. Um, him and his buddies, he was with, uh, Scott was with the uh, artillery, what was it, tank recovery, he was a tank recovery guy, he used to work on the M1 Abrams, that's when they first came out, they were the coolest shit in the world, man. Um, him and his buddies uh, rented a car <laughs> to come down, unannounced, you know, he always came down unannounced. He came down one time. I was in the barracks. I I think I had strep. I had I was sick as a dog. And he come in, come on, let's go party. And I'm going out and I was miserable the whole time we went out. But anyway, he used to take his friends, uh, his, uh other army buddies that were up in uh Bremen and they used to come down. Was it Bremen or Brever Bremerhava? I think it's Bremen is where you were at. Um but they rented a car. They stayed, I think, at a ghost house somewhere or a hotel. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to read. There's the alarm going off. It'll stop. Um, but they used to go around where they had the uh, the liquor stored in the in the, uh, They're like little college size uh, refrigerators, and I think they. They went around, they snuck in each of the rooms and just totally took all <laughs> the hotel in Frankfurt. <laughs> but he comes down and they got a, you know, those big green duffel bags that you see the army guys, you know, carrying and stuff. They had a chock full of little liquor bottles. Oh my God. And we went to the Rock Fabrique. One of the guys was really fucking drunk. And backed into another car or something and broke the taillight on this uh, on this rental. So we had to stage it to make it look like oh he backed into a, a guardrail for a staircase. You know, keeps your car from going down the, the stairs. The guy backs up into it, and shatters the, shatters this thing, and so we pick up all the pieces. <laughs> we move it over where uh, other. You know, other cars were parked and scattered all the shit on the ground. Had the colds I come and they had to get a report and everything so that they uh, so they didn't get charged for the damage of the car. So we were horrible. The military taught you a lot of things. And one of them is to drink and to drink a lot. Um, you were smart about it. You could, you could go get rashed and be in formation at five o'clock in the morning when the club closes at four. Be in formation at five o'clock, doing physical training and then going on a five mile run. Make sure you're in the back of the platoon so that you can kind of duck and puke. <laughs> and why the army picked yellow for the workout uniforms? A lot of them came back brown. Not me, but a lot of people, man, they shit themselves, puking all over themselves. Tough people, but the abuse we put our bodies through is <laughs> All right. So we're at 161. We got uh, seven more degrees, and then we'll switch cameras. We'll go live over to the system. Talk about that stuff forever. 
being in before the internet, I was communications. I did radio teletype, so I had a teletype writer. He sent encrypted stuff. I was with intelligence. Majority. Well, the whole time I was in active duty for four years, but over the air AM, and then uh, satcom, satellite communication, um, FM, microwave. Gonna have to take a break. The dogs want. Okay. No problem, man. I know how it is. I'm gonna have to take my dogs for a walk about too here now. Yeah, I'll just bring them out here. You guys are saying too, so. Oh, 163. We're getting there. Should have brought my acoustic guy here. Get in trouble. Play music while you're doing a live feed. Oh, poor baby. YouTube makes so damn much money. YouTube's in bed with Google. Google's in bed with Facebook. All of this is crazy. Yeah, I knew you were out of work for a while there, Scott. Or you got anything lined up? Oh, let's see. Looking up at the other monitor. Well, I have my, I'm over 20 certifications in my job. I'm hoping to get a some sort of a raise. I think February. But we'll see. Okay, 166. I'm gonna switch over and get things set up over here. Let's move you over and take a peek. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at in there. Don't want to have this in the way. All right, one more degree. Sorry, guys. No. mashing out. We're done mashing. We're now we're mashing out. So that was the timer. So at this point I'm gonna go ahead and shut the element off. That guy. This guy's gonna come activated here shortly after I start getting um, liquid over the element in the foil kettle. So right now we're going to move liquid. So I use my hot spider. Let me go to rinse this real quick just in case of dust or anything on it. Thank <laughs> you. 
friction in here so that when I go to move the liquid over, any, if any of the grain husks or anything come over with it, this will catch it. So we go ahead and move you guys over so you can see what's going on. Okay, so here I'm going to shut off. You still got pressure from the, the pump, but it stops it on this tube. So what I do is I knock the, the husks off. And then I just take it. Very gingerly put it in there in the boil kettle and start moving. Slowly. You want to do it slowly. Into the boil kettle. So this will be first running. We will probably have a total of. Um, at least three, two or three. Mm, that's good. Oh, that's sweet work. So do the yeasties. The yeasties love sweet work. You can see how slow it's going in there, but it's a little faster. Here we go. Make sure none of that gets into the kettle because you don't want the husks getting on that heating element and frying and Put a crappy off flavor in your beer. Oh, that didn't work. Hold on. Hold on, this is going to be a problem. I'm going to get up. Um, Scott, okay, let me ask a simple question. If you put the finish in a carboy, I'm assuming you finish beer like a carboy, do you have half the bottle or three the beer after you drink it out of the carboy? Do you want flat beer? Uh, the whole reason you bottle or egg is it's get it out of the carboy, get it out of the carboy because the carboy is going to hold, it's not a pressure vessel like that egg or a, a beer bottle. Um, yeah, you drink from the car away with no, no carbonation. Exactly. So the whole idea, plus you really want to want to, oh, what's the best way to do it? You want to get the beer off the true and all the brackets at the bottom of your fermenter, even in secondary food or in tertiary food, you can have some sediment at the bottom. So you want to get you want to rack it off of that and so you can start this clean, clean carbon.
and I was talking on the other microphone, so you probably barely heard me. Uh, what do you do to make the ABV more? Um, more base malts, or you can add adjuncts like um, corn. Corn sugar, dextrose. Right. Hold on just a minute. Those are my train of thought because we're done with the first runnings. Now, I hang this guy kind off. So I this look at that beer. Hey, here you are. How are you? Uh, all right. How are you? Good, sir. I'm doing okay. Got, got my 4,000 pace in so far. Awesome. Just over a half hour. Yeah. Yeah, this exercise thing, man, I feel so much better. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm baiting my little paces. The voodoo rain. You see haze at me. Yeah. <laughs> Yummy. Hot stuff. So, so Scott's asking about uh, also what do you use to make uh, the AV more? Um, you could use sugar, but there's some other stuff. It's called a uh, uh, malt extract. Uh, <laughs> It could either be liquid or dry. Uh, it's like powdered beer <laughs> for the most part. And you can just stir it in if, if you want to bump up the ABV. Or just add, I just have to use my, just uh, up the recipe. Right. Yeah, that, that would ABV. Yep. So we're adding what do you get? for a first batch. So you got quite the setup now, bro. You got it all together. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, it makes it so much easier. Yeah, I, I love to Not set in the temperature and you're done, you know. Right? Yeah, it's a good feeling. Maybe one day I'll break and I'll put together a system like that. Yeah, you're, you're an electrician. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, I can do it. It's just all my stuff stays outside. Yeah. I just don't have the room inside. I'm very jealous of your garage. Yeah, we need to build one. <laughs> right? Yeah, that'd be my area slash room. <laughs> yeah. 
I can see some big speakers so in that mix. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I got water in. So uh, we got uh, So you just kind of get water in there? What's do you that? measure the amount of water that goes? Do you uh, measure the amount of water that goes in for your sparges, or, or I mean, your mashes, or you just kind of guess at it? I, I guess the mate. Okay. I'm not like telling yeah, yeah. the I don't. I don't have the. I want to get. Um, <laughs> I want to get the you know with the level indicators, but um, I haven't done that yet. That's the only thing I'm missing. But right. I don't really have to have it. No. Well, I do two quarts per pound uh, uh, for the sparge, and yeah. uh, that's the bad, actually. Two, and so, so it's like you know, twenty-five pounds of, of grains or whatever. You get twelve and a half gallons of water. Of course, that's a bit big for your thing, I think. But how, how big are those? These are fifteen gallon. Are they now? Okay. All right. That's as big as that keg there, to be honest. The keg is only 15, I think, right? Oh, the, this one used the regular 15, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I brew out of. Yep. All right, we got research going again, so it's going to self-filter itself. I'm going to set the tire for 10. Start. All right. Oh, that looks pretty in that foil kettle. Woohoo! <laughs> nice. There. Hello. <laughs> right? Yeah, a buddy of mine is uh, uh, a buddy of mine lost his home to a friend. He used to homebrew, and uh, he's thinking getting back into it. I told him I've got some stuff I'll give to him. I've got some yeah. extra buckets and airlocks and stuff like that, yeah. I, I don't have, like, an extra hydrometer or whatever, but he knows what it takes to get going. Yeah. He, he had the glass the, uh, carboys instead of the buckets. I told him, yeah, if, if you don't mind working out of a bucket, it, it's all good. I mean, it does the same thing. Yeah. It's just, uh, he says. He said he's a germaphobe and he likes the glass. Well, but they're about and, 40 uh, bucks a piece. Well, <laughs> like here, as soon as I'm done getting the sparge done, my, the buckets right over here, those are going to be the fermenting buckets. I I had soaked them in our sand until the boil's done. I haven't had any issues. Exactly. Like you were talking well, about. Well, the main thing you, is don't. Uh, go ahead. I was I was saying just so you don't scrape up because as long as you're carrying buckets and you're not gouging them because that's what the bacteria will get is in the scrapes in the in the bucket so try yeah. not to abuse the bucket and, and and use like a sponge to clean it nothing abrasive yeah. and uh, that that helps keep down the uh, cross contamination. Yep. Over. <laughs> yeah. So let that filter. A little bit. Well, my buddy's got the great big hood vent. It's about three foot wide, uh, every bit of two foot deep. It's got one motor with two squirrel cage fans in it. It's like 960 CFM. What is it's, it? Uh, uh, it? It's a, a hood vent. A hood vent. Oh, uh, something that you would find like. Yeah, a super hood vent, though. I'm talking about uh, pretty much industrial, uh, really thick metal. And then on the backsplash, it's got uh, uh, it's 
got stainless steel backsplash and there's racks that pop out and uh, then there's heat lamps above those racks. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's cool. Is, my con is it all stainless is, is my steel? Connection crappy? <laughs> yeah, it's all stainless. My connection crappy and uploading too, so the hamsters are busy. Yeah. I'm trying to get the volume right on my TV. There you go. Wow. So I don't, uh, he, he said he wants to get rid of it. And so uh, I'll probably do a video about it. I'll find out what it weighs. And uh, uh, it's it's probably worth every bit of 1500 bucks, you know. I, I, oh, I need to sure maybe not. research some call numbers or something. But it's, it's badass. Yeah, like I said, at the backsplash, it's got more stainless steel and then racks that pop forward from there and then heat lamps above them <laughs> i mean it's actually meant more probably for like uh uh cooking fish or where you'd have a uh so you want to you have a percent beer scott um why like <laughs> <laughs> make a barley wine or just make wine yeah exactly <laughs> right I, I, I made a 10 point of barley wine. It, it was, the greens were like a 10 batch, although it was five gallons. It, it wasn't cheap to make, but it, it was come out to like 10, five something. Yeah, the five gallon batch yeah, it was awesome. about $60 to make. Oh, uh, yep, yep. Well, it's an 11% but you made yourself, <laughs> or 10 and a half yeah. anyway. <laughs> that's, yeah. I mean, that's it's like any other, year. It's, just, it's just a balance of green, but. Yeah, it's not a it, it's beer. Yeah, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna get me a homebrew. There you go. Yeah, I've got some in there. I'm trying to save a couple to put in bottles, and I've naturally done that. Um, but I'm gonna uh, a couple around to craft beer pours. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know bringing them over there. Okay, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna send. Uh, Send them a couple of the loggers that I did. That's that oopsie logger that I put the uh, uh, the wood pieces in, like the little wood uh, pellets or whatever, yeah. and yeah. it ruined the beer because I made it way, it, it just come out way too much wood in the flavor. And so uh, uh, Paul from PA Brew News said, well, put some cherry juice in there. He said, just uh, blend up some cherries and put it in there. Well, I do the 10-gallon batches, so the first one, because uh, they were both tasting like wood, um, the first one I did two cans and it was okay. And the second one I did four cans and it covered up all that wood for pretty good. And so it's, wow. it's pretty tasty. It's all right. I'll probably cool. pour me a couple here in just a second. There you go. And then the other one on top is my good old stout. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You look confused. A bit. You look confused a bit. Is there something wrong? <laughs> uh, you know how it is when you're brewing, you you know, you just can't stand still. <laughs> There's always something to do. Okay. Like, am I, yeah, am I yeah. not everything ready for the next, you know, thing? <laughs> That's one thing about brewing. Otherwise, your brew day's forever, you know? Oh, yeah, exactly. I forgot, I forgot to do that, you know? Yeah, it's, it's hurry up and wait. And then if you've got time to sit down, it's probably something that needs to be cleaned. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I got it. Prep, prep, daddy. <laughs> yeah. You go. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Let me see. I think I'm gonna I want to send you stuff. I keep forgetting to send. Um, let me see if I have all your details. If you can, um, Send me your address. Okay. Just, you know, PM me. And uh, I need to get a couple bottles sent off to you, man. Oh, oh awesome. Hell yeah. Let me see how to do this. Reply. Two minutes left before the next transfer. There you go. 
Where's the stick? <laughs> this your measure stick, huh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I did the same thing with mine. Actually, I made like little notches in it, but yeah, oh. like I could cut little notches. Yeah, you got. Uh, <laughs> there's a five right there. You know, it's got the lines around it, and then there's ten. Yeah. And then I That's need to get it up to at least the twelve, maybe a little bit more. Uh -huh. I'm surprised with Big Ball don't have a, a set up on that. No, no glass. What's that? I'm surprised you don't have a sight glass on those. I, that's the only thing I don't have, and I haven't really needed it because if I'm low on my, yeah. if I'm low on my volume, I just do another large. It's, it's not a big deal. Two quarts a pound for for uh, for the sparge. Uh, two quarts a pound. Yeah, depending on. Uh, Look at you. Yeah, depending on. Uh, well, up um, yeah. all screwed up here. Hold on. Yeah, baby. Keep <laughs> burning the shit out of yourself, you know. Ah! <laughs> He's those oh, oh, <laughs> We continue. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. That's yummy stuff. Any more questions, Scott? Let me know if you got any other questions, Scott. Now you you could use table sugar, but it's not recommended. The only time I use table sugar in brewing is uh, making wine. There you go. Yeah, you need to build yourself a garage. For a brew, you know, like the guys in uh, the UK, they got their brew sheds. And they're just tall enough so they can smack their heads on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Jim Payne. <laughs> His place right. got a few inches taller. 
I know it's funny watching this thing. He's all done. <laughs> 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 like Igor or something. Yeah. Drink the beer. <laughs> oh, shit. Nice. Set up for the boys. Scott's got a question on there. Hold on just a second there, bro. Brah. Well, see, by keeping that plug, that keeps you from turning on that element with no liquid on it. <laughs> And I don't even hook up to the electrical <laughs> until uh, that element is covered. Yeah, so yeah, that's right a good now, thing. It's, it's completely submerged right now. Yeah, that's a good habit to get barely, into. You can just barely see it. Thermometer in there. Cool. How are we doing here? We are at seven gallons right now, so we'll have to do another sparge. I'll take it. Peak at where we're at on numbers. Let him cool off. Let me mix it up. Ten seventy-five. Ten seventy-three. <laughs> We're at 14 bricks, so that's looking really good. Let me see what's coming out of it. How's that really? What's coming on? How does that relate to specific? Huh? How does what, what's the what's the uh, specific gravity? What's the t the ten number? Uh, I have to get the conversion thing out here. Give me a second here. So we're at uh, okay. no. coming, out, coming out of the match ton, we're at uh, 10 bricks. As soon as we get down to two and a half. Uh, ten, 10 bricks, like a. Uh huh. Uh, 2.5 bricks. 10 bricks. 10, 10. Right, right. And your 10 bricks is right about uh, 1040. I got my refractometer at, and it's hard to see him looking here, but yeah, cause mine's got the bricks and the uh, specific yeah. gravity. So you said you're at what, 14? Um, 14 in the oil kettle so far, but it'll do dilute down a bit more. Yeah, well, that's so 1055. I'm at, I'm at nine gallons right now. And you're going to go for I mean, three, about three and a half more gallons. We're still coming out of the mash time. Yeah. Right now, I can start with some power to it. And watch Peter spin. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott's asking, how do you get the yeast from another brewery? Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, my, uh, I'm waiting for a couple tools to arrive. Um, Desoldering these things are a pain in the ass, so I had to wait and save some money up for uh, a good desoldering tool. And I had to order parts, so uh, sockets and uh, different pieces that needed replaced on this one board. So some of that stuff comes from the UK, so it takes a while for it to arrive. But I got the VIC-20 running. The Commodore 64 is running. It's just I need to replace the cartridge port, which is thrashed on this. I had to order a new cartridge port. And then I have to reseat sockets where the traces are gone. I have to redo traces on the board. So I have to re-etch. So that's all that came from there. So we're about nine and a half gallons, so I'm going to have to add a bit more. This is where the guesstimation is going to come into play big time because I don't want to have a lot of water in um, the grain when I'm done here, when I get to my volume. Otherwise, you have to strain it. Go about, go about three gallons or so. Start heat this baby up. Full power. <laughs> We've got the power, Captain. Oh, wait. <laughs> One thing I like about this setup is you don't have to move the liquid around as much as you do, like when you do it. Yes, sir. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, the only, really, the only time I'm having to move a bit is uh, just to put the uh, water in the HP. Yeah. And after that, it's over. Activity. And you really got to watch that element because it'll get that one so fast. So you said you didn't have luck with the uh, last With what now? I'm sorry. With 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 fly sparging, I'm just gonna do it that way. As opposed to match, uh, uh, yeah. uh, um, sparging. I was fly sparging at first. My efficiencies weren't mm -hmm. there. As soon as I started back sparging, it started coming out really good. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's. 
I think it's uh, when you're back sparging, you're actually agitating the the grain. And I think when you're fly, oh, okay. yeah, fly yeah. sparging, it, yeah, channeling or something going on where it wasn't touching at all and getting all of the, the good stuff out. All right. Yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't hurt either. I mean, it's, it's about the same either way, but if you're finding efficiency is better that, that way, then hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's big time different. Yeah, that's cool. It's time to drink a beer, Brian. Yeah, I need to go get one. Yeah, you, you've already, you're in the, the boil kettle, so the hard part's done. Yeah, I just got to put the rest of the liquid in here in a minute, so... I'm going to go grab one real quick. I'll be right back. Put you guys, oh, yeah? you can watch it boil over while I'm gone. <laughs> Why do you think I'm seeing you now? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, hot break. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I turned it down to, I turned it down to 70%. Just while I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be funny. <laughs> so who else is in here? Oh my goodness. Still got 10 minutes for my upload to be done. <laughs> that makes a big sticky mess. I'll tell you what, it happens quickly, it does. Yeah, well, he, he's got controls, so it, it's a little easier. If you're if you're working with gas, you, you gotta you gotta pay attention. When it's when you when you see it start getting close, you, you better be watching because you'll have to throttle the, the fuel or power or whatever. He can probably set his to like just before boiling and then that way he could be there to monitor it for sure but <laughs> come on over <laughs> well it didn't boil over <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Scott says, come on, boy. Come on, man. This is action. Yeah, that, even when you add the hop, a lot of times it wants to do that. You got to add them suckers slow. Crack the door. It's freaking hot in here. Yeah, it's It doesn't get steamy in brewing? Um, it got humid real quick because I'm starting to boil. Yeah. Let's keep my fan going. There you go. I'm surprised you don't have an exhaust fan yet. Ooh, that is loud. The microwave's going, he says. <laughs> Oh. 
This is probably killing you having any music, huh? Yeah, it sucks, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. I, I can imagine what your brew days are like. I'm sure they're noisy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I crank the element up to 100%. Pulling uh, just over 23 amps. Right? Mm. Yeah, there you go. Now we're talking. Oh, this is so good. I was using uh, Magnum and Mosaic, it's, and uh, I just called it m, &M. It's got a little Crystal okay. 20 in it, base malts and carapils. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, the Mosaic really um, brings that floral taste nice. Yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, like a 10 gallons of uh, that yellow rose cone. It's a uh, uh, German Pilsner malt and mosaic only. It's a smash beer. I got nice. 10 gallons. It's just uh, it's sitting there waiting. I need to get off my lazy ass and uh, put it in a keg. There you go. Get some protein foam. Um, so about half a gallon more, and we'll be at volume. But how much are you going for uh, pre boil? Oh, total? I mean, like, like, I mean, I'm like your gallons. How much uh, volume are you going to have? Twelve and a half. Because I find okay. that my stick here, I need to get a new stick, but it's actually like eleven and a half. Because you get a good, over the hour, you get a good, the gallon boil off. Right, right. All right, so I think we're there. Yeah, I just guess uh, uh, you got that same keg like I've got. I, I get it about three fingers above that top rib, and, and that's yep. where I start mine. So I guess it's about about twelve gallons, like what you're done. Well, I found that uh, now that I keg goes to bottling, I gotta hit my vibes a little better. That way, uh, uh, that way, there's not. A bunch left over in the fermenter after the keg is full because I mean a five gallon keg is only five gallons and yep. so when that batch comes out to be an 11 and a half gallon batch it picked up some stuff didn't it That's yeah if you look worth there, doing that yeah uh, you know some of the grains and stuff it did catch which is awesome yeah that is good Now I'll put it in on the other side, right next to the Whirlpool port. So at the end when I'm cooling, the Whirlpool port pushes next to the hops. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well, now that I'm seeing it, Brian, that's where you, you usually start your boil. Uh, I see the rivets of the handle. And that, that would be a good inclination as to yeah. how much liquid you have in there. Correct. Uh, so, so just below the rivets. Yeah, just below the rivets. Yeah. Or like on my turkey fryer, as soon as I got it right above the rivets, it was six, six to six and a half gallons. That's how I did it. Right. <laughs> Okay, nice. All right. We are at 179 degrees right now. And this. Something up being electric is it's quiet. Oh, it's, it's great. Yeah, I mean, I, you'd, you'd be hearing gas blowing if I was brewing. You'd, you'd hear the gas blowing trying to get the temperature. Yeah, your jet burner. Yeah, it's noisy. See if I can hear it here. Yeah, the, the elements. 
cruising in there. It's 182 right now. It just climbed like three degrees in a minute. Wow. But yeah, you really got to watch it because it's quiet, you know, and next thing you know, it's, you're, you're boiling over. <laughs> Haven't had it happen yet. But, so you know. Can you set it like 208 or 10 or something and, uh, and not over? Could, could you tune it back a little bit to where you couldn't miss it? Yeah, I get it. We're in a little alarm here shortly when it's getting close. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, I get it. That makes sense. Right. Okay, that's what the alarm is. Yeah, that's great. I think your ears can hear that alarm. <laughs> it's <Yep. really> loud. <laughs> there she goes. Sweet words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, be coming here in a minute. Yeah, you just maintain uh, at like fifty percent on the element after you get to the boil. It just maintains it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm not peeing. I'm... <laughs> Hold up. Hold up, peeing. All right, we got, we got, we got it. it. Got it. Got it. Got it. It's not too bad. Did you hear me, Brian? What's that? Uh, Scott Lee said later, Tate. Okay. So the power sources to your are one ten volt. Uh, what happened? You, you broke up. I said your the power of your pumps are they one ten? Yeah, they're one ten. Yep. Yeah, I uh, you know split the phase in there. Put switches on them. There you go. That's so I wouldn't have to worry about an external source. Yeah, I can just run it, run it all from the control panel. Looks like your boil's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, I, I see it under the foam. Yep. Yeah, this is the fun part. And the recipe was one and a half. Boil and bubble. Toil and trouble. Starting to peek through. As soon as it starts rumbling a bit more, I'll turn her down. See that you hear it? Right, I do, yeah. Four, it's four degrees from 200 right now. 
so you know 200 here is my boil point okay oh maybe a little bit more i better watch my mouth oh you want more <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you more. Ooh. Damn it. Do you, do you ever use Starland to combat foam? I um, usually just breaking it up. Um, I usually spray it, but since I've been doing it in the not the turkey fryer, I'll spray with water. But this one, you don't have to because of the space, you know, across. Right, right. You got more space, so you get to play with the foam more and break it up. Okay, the turkey fryer sense. was kind of tricky because if, if you tried to do this in the turkey fryer, you'd be sloshing it over the edge. We're almost past the hot break already. I haven't even turned it down yet. Awesome. Turn the fan back on. Get hot. Go pour me a beer. Here, oh It's cranky, man. It's warm. Come on, give me a little bit more life there, baby. There you go. Okay, I just turned her down. Mmm, smell of his own. There you go, boys. Get my dry stuff. Yummy. Got plenty head. Yeah. See if that works. There you go. Focus the damn thing. See my beer there? Ain't that pretty? Yeah. I love this hop spider, man. That, that's... Do you know that it lets all the uh, fibers out? Yeah. Since I use a plate chiller, uh -huh. I don't want to clog the plate chiller. Right. I was just kind of concerned because uh, doing the IPAs, there's so many hops that it doesn't seem like they're... Uh, like it's getting all the flavor out. I'd be wrong. Yeah. There. Let me make sure she's okay so I can sit down. Yeah. One of these days I'm going to put the pitcher in pitcher in here. Cheers, man. That'd be cool. Cheers. My dry step. Roast. Let me get a free boil on this thing. Then I got another five gallons, got a uh, half pound of cocoa nibs in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, again, I just make room in the keg. <laughs> I just haven't been drinking like I used to. So we're starting off at 12, 12 bricks, 12. which is about a 10.40 cent, something. Okay. 
Ten forty-five. I'm not like that. That's for the pre-boil. Let's see. Okay, so you'll probably be at fifty-five on the way out. Yeah, ten forty-eight. What's it supposed? To be? What's it supposed to be? Um, uh, let's let me look real quick. Uh, the original grounding is uh, when it's done boiling, it's gonna be a ten fifty. Yeah, that sounds right then. Yeah, you'll you'll, you'll get that. In. You should. Uh, now you'd be really more, close. I get a little bit more most times. Okay, awesome. I know it's always great when you get a bit more. Yeah, it is right. It's like woo woo, more party for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your bicycle back there? What's that? Is that your bike? Oh, are you talking? No, about your, your bicycle. Oh, my bike. No, your bike. Is that yours? Yeah. It's not. It's not you one of the expensive thing? ones. It's like an old Schwinn type. But yeah, oh, I got. Okay. That's all good. I, I got to get it fixed. The. Uh, when you start going uphill and you start pedaling hard, it starts to skip. So I need to I need to take it in. There's a bike place down the street here that I'm going to take it to so they can uh -huh. fix it. Oh, we're going hard. Better pay attention. Got to watch this thing. <laughs> I heard, I heard it. Here, I'll let, let you see here. You see oh it? yeah, it's going good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was really yeah. rocking there a minute ago. It knocked some of the hops out. Yeah, I'd start. To... <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm down to forty-five on the power. Nice. Your your plate chiller's not like you for that. Oh, it's as long as it's as long as you don't do too much, it should be okay. Yeah. So what kind of beer are you making again? It's it called it Rock, Rocktoberfest. Rocktoberfest, so nice. Uh, it's a American twist on a German Marzen, the regular Oktoberfest. Okay. Sure. Instead of uh, instead of having uh, German Pilsner malt, I'm using U.S. Two Row, and then I'm using U.S. Vienna. And then German Munich mm -hmm. Light, which is a Munich one, and then some uh, Crystal Sixty. So it's it's okay, the yeah. rendition only using more uh, U.S. stuff instead of the expensive German stuff. I see. Okay, that makes sense. But I call it uh, Rocktoberfest yeah, because uh, the Colorado Rockies, if they get through. Uh, if they get through this this month, they'll be in the playoffs. They're in first place right now, so we call it October. So make a beer in honor. <laughs> there you go. Yep. What kind of yeast do you use? Um, instead of getting a regular lager yeast, I'm getting it's the it's the one the sap lager, which is the S twenty three. I've used it before. It's a okay. more of a, it's a top hmm. fermenting, just like the U05 and the O4, and it's uh, it's not a okay. bottom active yeast, and it's clean. So I've used it before, where uh, oh. it 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 really uh, it does a great damn job on the beers for a fake lager, you know. 
Right. Yeah, it's okay. the Zap Log on 23 And then Holler Tau on the top. Okay. Heck, I can just check here. Up a little bit. You're all uptown, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I like, uh, I love the control I get. Cranking along. Are you having to turn it back up a little bit? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. John, John's in the chat. Dogs, real quick. Hold on. They probably need to go with that. Yeah, he's got quite a system now, John. He's got it, got it all dialed in and, and knows what he's doing. Got a really nice system. Oh, uh, is someone chatting? Let's yeah, see. it's John. Hey, John. And Ali, and Ali, and Ali. You know, I'm sure you've seen him. Yeah, thanks, John. Cheers, man. Having a homebrew. All right. So this is watching some. You want to join the chat? You're more than welcome, John. I'll send you the link. I don't publicly put it out there because. We get Trollville. Mm-hmm. Cool. I haven't used that in a while. <laughs> I don't see seen of it anymore. It, it hasn't worked in song, and so every now and then I'll come back around. And my computer's running really slow because I'm uploading a video. Right. Cool. Uh, the style of beer I'm doing it's it's a twist off of uh, German Marzen, which is an Oktoberfest, but I'm doing it with mostly American uh, ingredients instead of. German pills, I'm using um, uh, two row. Um, I'm using US Vienna. The only thing German uh, from the grist wise is the Munich one. And then I'm using some uh, Crystal 60. Then Holotel pops. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. The mirror thing works, but this thing works. You're trying to get the overlay. Yeah, I was trying to do that the lower third thing oh, where right. where it's got like that that newscaster crap on there where it looks like yeah. you know, it's got your name and you can blow it. It sometimes it That's used to easy. work sometimes, but it hasn't worked in a while. Oh well, it's not necessary. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Now, somehow I made it smaller. I don't know why. <laughs> Trying to figure this out here. Oh, screen share. We don't want that. Oh, okay. Now it's bigger. <laughs> I don't know if that or I did that. Oh, now you're small. Maybe that's you. Is that me? Okay, I'm switching it back. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah. You take a little screen. The other, like three quarter of the size. It, it wasn't hard to see, but it was smaller. Uh, <laughs> you should have all the because you're you're the moderator. Though. You're the you the man. Aren't you auto? See, we don't get you. I think I gave you that. Control before. Uh, yeah, I've got a rent. 
There we go. Yeah, I've, I've got a ramp. Cool. Yeah. Chat. Screen share. No one does. Another 44 right. minutes, and you'll be. Uh... Let's see. We've been going for about 10 minutes. So, next one's at 30, so. Do time there. to tell you when to do those things? Can you set your timers to remind you to drop hops? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, you do, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pat you on the back, put your hands in the way. All right, next top drop in 20 minutes. I love this little timer, man. Yeah, it makes it much easier, I mean. Well, you know, you start drinking and shit, and you forget. <laughs> Holy crap, where the time okay. go? Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you're sipping on a Youngling Oktoberfest now. Awesome, man. That's good stuff, man. We don't get Youngling here for some reason. Or I, I haven't found it. it. Hmm. Everywhere else seems to make it uh, sound like it's a constant beer. like to get it all done. Right. Control Central. Control Central. I'm surprised you don't have that link. I'm surprised you don't have that link with your uh, computer. <laughs> right. I like you can control it all from the computer. <laughs> right. You just sit there and you're watching the monitors and <laughs> some exactly. automated hop drop thing, a carousel of hops that go in there. Move one position. <laughs> There's your five minute hop drop. <laughs> right. It's a carousel. <laughs> Ooh, that is bright. Well, I'll leave that up for a minute. My son's off to work. Awesome. Ooh, a little bright there. Oh, yeah. Air this place out a little bit. Get a little, little Texas <laughs> humid here. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hold on. Here we go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Big old lot. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, there you go. Get some snuff and uh, <laughs> did that for throw a chow. <laughs> did you? Hey, you got to be real Texan. You got to hit the Levi Garrett. See? So go chew them back, your boys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I never get sick off that crap. Oh, my God. oh yeah. It, it'll turn you green right away. <laughs> You're not used to it. Oh, yeah. 
As for your bike, I think you could fix that yourself, Brian. There's just two little screws that are on the derailleur. The, de the derailleur is the thing that moves the chain from one sprocket to the other. I think it's if you play with because I don't know what a bike shop itself because I, I you know it's pretty smart I'm pretty smart working on it it's just I think it might be the chain itself it's just so old that it's or the teeth are mm -hmm. worn down on the the front sprocket because that's where it skips so oh I see I just haven't had time to do anything with it since being in the new place so right. hey, well, it's skipping like it's trying to it, is it skipping like it's to make it to another sprocket, or is it slipping yeah. on the sprocket itself? When you're, when you're going uphill and you're putting you're putting pressure when you're cruising, it'll pull, yeah. pull. You know, I think that either oh. there's a bad tooth, um, or there's a, something in the chain that's not right. Just got to get a new chain. Have you have you had that bike for a long time? No, I actually. Um, uh, one of my neighbors where he used to live gave it to me because I was doing a lot of work for him. Mm -hmm. So I really haven't had time to, you know, really dive into it. Yeah. Because if the bicycle people are anything like a regular mechanic, they're going to try to sell you things that you don't need. You're going to end up with right. new uh, sprockets on your, on your crank, you know, and <laughs> you know how if people can be. I'll just replace them myself, you know, because I know you can buy almost everything yeah. on eBay, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you if your tensioner is working, then it, it should hold it yeah, together. That you know? that There's not a lot. Of I, I checked all that out. I checked the, you know, the multi sprockets on the back wheel. Um, it's got to be the chain or that front sprocket. So it's one of the two. Uh, I don't have a chain checker. Is it schnut or is it schnut? Like schnut? <laughs> I bet it's schnut. schnut. I'm almost ready to go get another one. Mm hmm. Well, this is like a 20 ounce glass or whatever, so I'm only pouring them about halfway. <laughs> it's a stout, so it's a stout, so it's all right to get warm, but yeah, I don't need yeah, that. Me just sitting here. I, not gonna fill it. I don't know. It's like the only one clean. <laughs> there, I have like a stack of glasses back here. That's yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm just I'm super busy. I've just been lazy. I hadn't done my dishes. Right. Schnuz, is it schnuz? Yeah, is it? I think it's schnuz. Right. Well, yeah. Oh, buzz, He's yeah, like buzz, yeah. Schnuz. Schnuz, 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 schnuz. I just called asshole. That's a complicated. That's a complicated. <laughs> now he's a good guy. He he always uh, he always watches my videos and he's always got a comment and I sure appreciate him. He he does uh, some geocaching stuff too. Oh he takes sweet! Takes little dogs for walks and yeah yeah. He says that's close enough. <laughs> you guys are more than welcome to at least join the audio portion of this if you don't have a video camera or anything. Yeah, you can do anything like that there. Cool. I'm going to go get a refill. Oh, yeah. Grab me one. <laughs> I'll throw it right down <laughs> to you. Yeah, e email it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, old well, Brian's up to. We got that nice Bruce up. We got his computer working cameras. Yeah, he's up to. Thirty-six minutes.
Yes, sir. John is. Yep. This thing here is uh, just a dry stick. And then uh, I've got another gallons that's not in a keg yet, and it's got uh, it's been done the half pound of cocoa nibs, and so it, it should be chocolatey that one. So yeah, this is the one I, I brew this this particular recipe quite a bit. Um, I can drink stick around, it don't difference. Yeah, I can't wait to get into this. Close the pod pandora. There you go. Pal, close the pod page. Yeah, that's pretty bright. <laughs> Empty bright. Oh, that's fine. You can still join the, the broadcast even if you don't have a video. Yeah, it's, um, we're boiling right now. Um, John, I can... We can do boil cam. Boil cam. There you go. Then I can watch it while I'm sitting on my ass. <laughs> this whole electric brewery is be lazy. <laughs> hey, and it makes more brew too. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I'm jealous. Like I said, it's so very quiet and. Oh yeah, and you don't seems have like to a lot of stuff to freaking propane. Exactly. So I, these, these are, these are 15-gallon uh, pots or kettles, but I do 10 gallons. So I do uh, two fermenters. So, so it's a four cases of beer. Two, yeah. Yeah, that's totally four cases to put it in layman's terms. So a hundred bottles of beer, a hundred bottles of beer. <laughs> yeah, thank God we don't do that anymore, right? Yeah, right. I know. Once you go kegs, man, yeah. you don't go back, man. I, I know. I have. I've got a big bunch of bottles, and I'm gonna give it to a buddy of mine, and, and I'm gonna. I have two bench cappers, and I'm gonna give him one. It was a, a friend of mine that his house burnt down, and he used to brew, but he lost everything. Yeah. And. Uh, I feel like I kind of need to pay it forward because a lot of the brew stuff that I got was given to me from a guy yep. who quit brewing and I've got extra stuff now. And so I'm going to help the other guy out that, like I said, his house burned down. He, he's in a new place and he's been there for a while. You know, the, the, the whole house burning down thing was a couple of years back, but so he's established again, but he's wanting to get back into home brewing. And um, he said that his buddy was also also interested and they wanted to come over to watch one of my brew days. I was uh -huh. like, sure, we can do this. And so we're just going to do a, a liquid malt extract, something that you could do in a kitchen. We're going to do it, you know, outside of my set. But uh, I'm going to do something really easy for them, or maybe like a with, with a partial mash where you got your specialty grains, maybe something like that. But we're going to, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to show them the whole full grain because it's complicated, you know, and it takes more equipment. Yeah. So I'm just going to teach you. You have to know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then that's discouraging if, if you just jump into it with both feet like that. So, And even if your your brew kettle is only three gallons, that's okay, too. What's going to happen is, is uh, when you put it in the fermenter after this boiling process that he's doing and, and put it the hops, then it's going to go into the fermenter. Of course, it's not going to fill it up because it's only three gallons. So you just top it up with water to the, to the five-gallon mark, and there you go. So inevitably you're making like a beer concentrate and then you just dilute it down uh, in yep. the fermenter. So you could, you could do it with your uh, chili pot or your spaghetti pot, you know, whatever biggest vessel you have at your house, you could do it that way. And, and doing that liquid malt extract is super easy. You get your water boiling, you take it off the heat, you stir in the syrup and, and get it back to boiling. And then, uh, so you're already at the point that Brian's at right now, 
you're already there then and it skips all the grains and all the rinsing of the grains and this and that and you start just brewing your own beer you know just right yeah. away and so i i cheat sometimes i do that i've, I've done a, a few of these like that uh i like this because it's a very cheap beer to make this is my dry stout it's like 17 dollars for the five gallon batch you know so and, and it's uh, one hot drop early and it's cheap yeah it's cheap and easy and so i, I don't mind doing it <laughs> You're, it won't boil a full five gallons. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's saying. He, anyway, as I was just talking about, he, yeah. he's, it's uh, uh, like a grandfather or something like that. Yeah, something like that. And yeah, just dilute it down. And you're good to go. That's right. And when you're kegging, it's it's important. Like I was saying a while ago, it's important to get that five gallons per fermenter because it's not going to hold it. You know, so. If, if you're bottling, it doesn't make a difference. You could have, say you've got two fermenters or whatever, you could have six gallons in each, and it doesn't make a difference because it's all going into bottles. You'll just have one more bottles. But otherwise, you're left with, with uh, beer in your, in your fermenter and not in a keg, which it won't hurt it, but... There's another three gallons over there that, that needs to go to a keg. <laughs> yep. Your concrete looks slick. What's that? The concrete looks very slick. Oh, it's it looks shiny. Like, it's not completely slick. Well, I'll tell you what, if you uh, put water on it and you're out your barefoot, yeah, you're going to fall on your ass. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have them do if if I was watching it being done, I would have left them uh, just ha just brush it and leave it there. But right. uh, they, they they made it look really nice, but it look it looks like it's very slick. Yeah, I've almost fallen a couple of times. I bet. All right, I'm gonna do two things at once. Uh oh. Well, I gotta get these fermenters going. Okay. Gotta get the, the star sand. Oh. It, would, it would have been nice to have some flames in there, wouldn't it? Yeah. I just like to have these soak a bit. Now I gotta take a leak, sure. <laughs> that ain't right, Brad. <laughs> that ain't right. Oh, there you go. Right, start saying. Shake it up. 
So much for the two calories I burnt this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, two beers is ruined that. <laughs> I'm still deficit so far. One week for long. <laughs> Yeah, I'll shake those a few times. <laughs> so we're putting in one full. When people say they don't like beer. It all is hot at least once. They're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now I always keep my uh, my hop and my grain separate because my dogs love the grains. All right. You don't want your pets getting into the hops because it'll kill them. That's what I've heard. It's weird. They're poisonous. They're actually poisonous. Is this your technique? Um, well, sorry to, actually, I, I take the cooler and, and put it on a, like, it's like a wheelchair for the most part, and I just wheel it out, and I either uh, put it in the compost or, or let's just throw the garden, just, like, broadcast it into the garden. Right. Something you definitely want to do while you're Yeah, I'll say something for the dogs, but... Uh, I check the rest. I don't have a yard like I used to, so I can't compost. Right. The main thing is don't forget about it, because a couple days later it gets really stinky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they call this sour mash for a reason. <laughs> yep. It's pretty sour quickly. Uh, something else that I've done with it is uh, uh, a buddy of mine. He hunts hot. And so they'll uh, he takes it out and baits traps with it. Oh yeah. I, I, guess, I guess hogs like that stuff. I mean, it makes sense it's grains, but I mean, really nutritionally, most of the value is gone from them after the, you know after they've been uh, matched. But so they're they're kind of dead cows. But I mean, this food. <laughs> That's what we're making after all this liquid bread, right? Yeah, I think. Uh... The dog biscuits have them too. Yeah. We do a lot of these things. Yeah. Uh, with it. You want to what? You put masses with uh, uh, for the dog treats and the yeah, uh, all natural peanut butter. Uh, there's other there things. There you go. There's the old false bottom. Nice.
You have to measure that one day. I got a false bottom that was given to me, but I don't have anything that it will work in. So it might fit yeah. in your kettle. So when it, if you think about it, uh, yeah, if you think about it, me measure that wow. and uh, me with a you know email or whatever, and uh, I'll send you that other one. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it on a video. Uh, that one, it's got look, like little legs on it, and, uh, and it's got the big bay handle. Yeah. You, you know, kind of like a paint bucket or whatever. Well, I was having issues with the uh, manifold that I created before, you know, made out of copper tubing. And I just didn't mm -hmm. the, the, the volume of liquid to flow for pumping. So I had to go with the full bottom. Right, right. Wonder if Rocky wants to come eat some. All right, guys. Oh, hey, Rocky. Ba 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 He loves it when I brush them too. Right outside here, it's going to Got to put a halter on them, you guys. Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, meet the neighbors, huh? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dogs that have moved in. I don't want them to take it off to get hurt because they're small. All right. I take you out too, drunken one, but you're not here. <laughs> Thanks. Would I have to wear the little harness? <laughs> yeah, the dropping one harness. Okay, puppies, pinch a loaf. <laughs> They're about the size of your <laughs> Uh, sure looks like a beautiful day there, bro. Oh,
Oh, you're good, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love my babies. <laughs> he won. <won't. laughs> He's good at it. Look at his chops. <laughs> Well, you already had Craig Newberger come through and Hillbilly Wine and Middle Fruit. <laughs> Little turds. Turds with fur or hair. Rocky is a Yorkie, Yorkshire Terrier. And Andy, she's a Hatch Schnauzer, Hatch Walla. She's a Chinese. Now he's getting into the bag. Right, way melly. <laughs> <laughs> Andy likes it. She used to not like the grain. Nice warm. Nice warm. You have a lot of sweetness on it. It's not too sweet. See how we're doing on foil. You blow about like three quarters of a gallon. Yeah, it's kind of wet. Okay. Yeah, you can get Now, are those uh, Lincoln Advent? You read them? 
I'm sorry, man. I didn't hear you. Can you, can you uh, are these blinking at you? You know, you know how the uh, the hertz is off, or is you can read them? No, no they're, they're they're consistent. They're consistent. It's just one on the right is flat, but it, I can see it says alarm, and then something is doing something. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not flickering though. I, I know what you're talking about. It's not flickering. Yeah. Cool. I just wondering if it shows up. Happy to <laughs> Happy to <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you ain't tired. I'm not tired. I only asleep last night. Oh. I, did, I did stop. I did stop for a couple of burritos there uh, after work yesterday. Oh. I talked all over you. Yeah, I got plenty of sleep. I don't know why I'm yawning. Why? Uh, <laughs> You're right. I should be outside. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I still got another five thousand to make today. <laughs> I got a bike on the screen or I have to use had an emergency and had to use a strainer for uh, the stuff um, to spray on the, the vents to waterproof it. There's clogging up things. Uh -huh. I didn't have anything but my homebrew ones, and then I have to go buy a new one. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be straining this. I can do it the hard way. Yeah. You're very patient. So how's the job going, good? Uh, yeah, it's been pretty steady, which I I need that right now. I'm trying to get my uh my truck fixed. Something my headlights not working, and I. have Checked all the uh, fuses, and they're all good. And my relays are testing like they're okay, but for some reason I can't get my high beams to work, so it can't pass the state inspection. Yeah. See, high beams, though. Yeah. So is it mechanical and where you switch one on and off? Uh, well, that's the that I've got coming is the, the actual turn signal indicate the turn signal thing that's got the lights and everything else yeah. in it you know that goes but that, that's uh, the well yeah it was uh, right at 50 for the one i'm getting i got the cheapest one they had just to find out if it's that um yeah. i looked at the schematics but to be honest they they had me pretty confused uh, yeah, I've already checked all the fuses, like I said, uh, under the uh, in the truck and then under the hood. And then I've tested the relays after learning how to do that, you know, from YouTube or whatever. I've learned how to test relays. And they're all showing good. And so I don't get it. Cheers, Tim. Tim is here. Tim, Tim's brew. I'm going to give that a break for a little bit. Give that a break for a little bit. we got about a minute and a half left before the 10 minute drop. We're almost done. Yes, sir, sir. And you get to put that fancy work chiller to work. Yep. That was a hell of a deal. You're talking about that. I got it for 50 bucks. Holy yeah. crap. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. 
That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. So, as opposed to 200. Give me your world clock out. There you go. I got to go in real quick and see if I have something inside. Hold on. Okay. Here's Tim. Damn. Cat locks. So on the downhill slide, now yeah, just one more hop drop, I think, and it's off to the chiller. Okay, so I know the alarm went off, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so... Uh, it's hop time. It's hop time. It's hop time. Yeah, it's hop It goes Okay, so now I gotta get the chiller done. I hate when I forget and I hook this up last and this chiller is hotter than hell when you're trying to put the hose on the fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make sure you get that outbound one on there for sure. Well, I did a little upgrade my water, too. I, I went ahead and got, well, the right kind of water hose for my <laughs> for my brew stuff. And I got a whole house uh, filter, one of those yeah. charcoal filters. So, so everything goes through that for my brew stuff, yeah. Because I was, to be honest, I was using just a regular old water hose for my, for my water. I wasn't yeah. even using, like, one of the white water hoses. And... I didn't realize it till I decided to do like just carbonated water because I keg. I was just gonna make up some carbonated water just for something to drink, just for fun. And after tasting that, it 
tasted a lot like water hose. <laughs> so yeah. I just this time I uh, this time I redo my plumbing a bit. You know, so I do have one of those uh, food grade or water grade hoses uh, and and and, uh, and a shark coal. So that ought to make a difference. Oh yeah. Now, Are you doing that right? We're circulating here. So the chiller gets sanitized. You sure that's right? Go for the rest of the time, it'll sanitize. So I got this hose, which is the the drain hose, and then I have the water coming in here. It's going that way through the plate chiller. Then I have the pump pumping the work going that way. So you got your counter for this. And it'll go from boiling to whatever my water temperature is in a split second. I really need to invest in one of those. So much solder gets wasted with that coil that I... Oh, yeah. Just ran the other side of the hose out. So we got four minutes. All my flavor pops are in. Cheers. Cheers to the beers. So green hose, uh, right outside the, right by the bicycle there, there's um, rocks that they have. Before they put the rocks in, they have a, a drain that goes underneath the concrete. I just let it go in there. I don't, I probably, it, uh, with the 10 gallons that are gonna go into the fermenter, it is, uh, I'm probably going to use maybe seven gallons of water total to cool it. What? Really? Yep. Wow. That would be awesome. Yeah. Maybe I have a little to bit that. more because you have to get the plate chiller down to temperature first. I'm going to say probably 12 gallons, maybe. Oh, that's that great. Yeah, yeah it, that's it, one it reason why I wanted to get it. It takes me 45 minutes to do that. Yeah. And you're recirculating it where I'm, I'm bobbing the damn coil in the beer, yeah. you know, work. Yep. And, uh, yeah. It's crazy. Damn. Yeah, I got to get me one of those then. So we got two and a half minutes. You'd have to have a pump to pump that beer through there, pump the work through there, wouldn't you? Know? No. Um, you can actually use gravity to go through the plate chain. Can you? Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. I was reading up, I never do it, but I like to throttle mine so I can get the right temperature. Mm -hmm. I'll show you when I'm doing it. So I'm going to set the tripod up so you guys can see. Okay. Yeah, I, I've, I've got to get me one of those then. Great investment. You know me, I brew pretty man style. <laughs> no pumps, none of that crap. I, I lift the uh, uh, the water into the HLT, and then everything else is gravity fed. Hmm. 
Which after thinking about it, I could I could plumb some uh, piping up there to the HLT. Yeah. I wasn't having to lift it. Fresh yeah. So that's just your plumbing clean out, right? Yeah. What's that? Say it again. That's your plumbing clean out. Like if you had a plumber come, like try uh, to actually your... drain where the um, the rain. Oh, okay. Yeah. Rain. Believe me, I wouldn't put anything else down it except water. Right. Our sanitary. When I get my gallon jug, fill with this star sand, fresh. Haven't replenished it in a while. Yeah, it's a, it's a counter flow chiller is what, you, what you've got there. Yeah, that, I've thought of making one of those, too. Yeah. I made one by hand. It works pretty good. When, when are you going to send it to me? <laughs> 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 I, 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 you got that plate chiller now. <laughs> but now that's what Snessa's saying is uh, he's got a double copper coil. Uh, 10 millimeter in 15 millimeter coiled up and he's doing the re you know the reverse thing like you're talking about hot where it runs through one right. and then the water through the other right yeah I, I've just I got the heat exchanger thing and yeah it weighs so much water yep I mean we, we don't have a <clears throat> we don't have a water bill here because we have our own well but still it wastes a lot of water I'm going to switch over. Give me a second here. my uh, airlocks together here. Pull you down for the low down. Adjust my legs here. I'm running water through the plate chiller right now. You see the needle moving? Holy crap. I'm just barely running the water through it, too. Chair. Wow. That's freaking insane. Cool, huh? Yeah. All right, so we got 
first fermenter. So right now it's down to almost a hundred. Let's see, let me open her up a little bit more. That's freaking insane. I gotta give me one of those. <laughs> So as soon as it gets down the temp, that's when I'll start uh, feeding it into the fermenter. So right now it's at just under 90. That's freaking insane. And it's cooling it in the kettle right now too. Yeah, well of course. Right, right, right. You're, you're, you're circulating through that thing. That's something that's dropping like a rock. Yep. So now it's about 80. What do you think your water temperature is at? Um, I'm going to say probably 70, 75, 70. Yeah. We'll see how far it goes down. But right now I can do it. I'd be happy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right, right. That's what I was just thinking. I mean, you could, you could go from there. It'll cool off on its own, but that's crazy fast, man. All right, so now I'm going to stop the flow through the pump for the work and shut it off at the Whirlpool port. Get the lid off for the fermenter. Uh, right now, now that it's not hot, usually these are hotter than hell. Oh, yeah. And then, so right now, my water temperature is about 78. Okay. Oh yeah, there it is. Just email me like three gallons of that stuff. I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to do it from here. The rest is easy. You just gotta yeah. wait. <laughs> exactly. The rest is easy. Yeah. It's like a penis hanging over a urinal. Uh, it looks nice. Wait, yeah. I mean. <laughs> So right now the temperature is at 72. Yeah, that, that, that's cool. I got to give me one of those. Go get the roof. Temperature still around the 73, 74.
Are you reading the comments, Brian? No. <laughs> what are they saying about me? <laughs> it, it, it says, uh, I have to say, I'm a tad bit jealous that there's no fear factor of boiling hot work going everywhere. <laughs> I, I do have a plan to update the tap on my Burko boiler to make transfers less exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, I hit the wrong thing when uh, I disconnected a line. Oh my god! Oh right. Oh, just hot shit everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that can get dangerous all of a sudden. And then he's asking, "Do you aerate the work or just rely on the flow of the work?" Well, I do. Two things. One, I try and make it where it makes bubbles in here the way it's going. And then number two is when I put, right before I put the yeast in, when I take these downstairs to my basement, I'll shake the hell out of these things for a good 30 seconds a piece. And it, uh, I get active fermentation within 24 hours, sometimes, yeah. within, sometimes within six. Right. I'll start right. seeing bubbles. Yeah, if I brew about this time during the day, by the next morning, it'll definitely be going. Yeah. They're here in camp. <laughs> I went a little short on the other fermenter to see how much is in here. Okay. A bit of that thing is hot as hell. What is it? Here's where we're at in the kettle. Oh yeah, yeah. You're almost so, there. Yeah, it's uh, it's hotter than hell in there, and that sweet how it just goes from there to there. That's insane. Yeah. And this last part, these hoses get uh, sanitized from the hot work when they're running through the silicone and everything. So you really don't have to spray a lot down, just the lids of the fermenter and stuff. So I always keep a, a bottle of star sand around. There you go. Nothing more satisfying than seeing work going into a fermentation vessel. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, I guess I need to clean out a keg and move some beer into one of them. I got an empty keg. I just got to clean it out yet. Yeah. That way I've gotten something brewing done today. Go out and enjoy the rest of the Wonderful day outside. Well, exactly. Well, after this, I'll I'll stop the feed. And I got to clean up and all that fun stuff. Oh yeah. We'll take the puppies for a walk and then go work out. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo. laughs> go for uh, maybe a five mile walk. There you 15 go. And a, Fifteen and a half minute miles. Fifteen and a half. I get my dog and not down to weight yet, so. It's too hard on my knees. Yeah. All right. We're almost done. Woo, we are done. A little bit more, baby. Come on. <laughs> 
Sideways to get as much out. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. All right, now I'm done. A lot of sediment coming in. Okay. All right, stop the pumps. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my brew day. Dun, da, da, da. Put that baby to bed. Stop wasting more water. Got my hair locks. Put some hair around the hole so I can hit it. <laughs> That's it, friends. Done deal? Wee! Now I can take a break for a minute. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Here's the chair. Well, you made that look easy. Now it's just cleanup, right? Yeah, that's the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> Hate the cleanup part. I know I need to hire a tech. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. All right, man. Shake it, shake it. Oh, yeah, I'll shake that baby when I get it downstairs. That baby don't know what's happening to it. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do an update on this. Uh, do uh, get a video together as experimenting and then do, uh, you know, when I'm racking it over, putting it into a uh, keg and then uh, doing a taste test. And, you know, awesome. Do what we can do. Can't wait. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Take care, Mr. Brian. Give a damn good afternoon. You too. See you guys. Bye, chat. Cheers. Yep. Keep yep. talking. Keep doing what you're doing. Never stop homebrewing. Or barbecuing. There you go. <laughs> They're all rhymes. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Cheers.